This story is quite short, but it really traumatized me so much when I was a child, and I actually succeeded to forget about it for a long time. Now, I've been reading the Reddit for some weeks now, and my memories got brought back to me for some reason. After reading some scary stories on here, it's not as scary, terrifying, or creepy as some of the others here. But for a 13 year old who's never seen any violence and always lived in the comforts of a happy family life among friends, it was terrifying in its own level. So for context, I was around 13 at the time and I don't quite remember the date. I've always been a big childish person, partly because of a car accident when I entered a medium school that felt like it had stopped my growth mentally. I barely had any friends because I was going through the weird looks bullying, and the only ones that were okay to hang out with me were people younger or with the same mindset as me. Every couple years, my parents would send me to a summer camp lost in the mountains, where there were basically mountain activities like hiking, exploring forests, and all that. I live in France, and I don't know how summer camps out for work, but here... It basically works from an age classification. There were three groups, the blue one, the younger kids, the yellow one, the medium, and the green one, the older. I was supposed to go to the yellow group because I was still too young, but for some reason, I got brought to the green group, composed of people that were 16 or 17 at the time. And basically, everyone hated me for being so young and childish. Let's not hide it. The day that I remember was one of the last days. The instructors that were keeping an eye on us brought us to the deepest spot of the forest to have a picnic. And after that, they looked at us and asked if we wanted to play hide and seek. Everyone was probably too old for that, but they still set up the thing, to which most refused to even hide. I was a kid, and of course I was overexcited, and when they started counting, I ran as quickly as I could to a place super far so they wouldn't find me. There was a smallish river and so I jumped over it, and after some stabs, I feel a hand catching my hair as very violently. I try to turn myself but the hand just slips to my neck and catches it really tightly against its side. I was terrified and I tried to fight back and to resist, but the hand that was restraining me was one of a grown man with lots of strength. I started screaming at the top of my lungs. I never screamed that loud, but seemingly nobody even heard me. And the guy started talking while dragging me to the forest. He was completely mad and kept repeating, You'll see. I hurt you so much you'll cry and scream even more. I remember him talking about harming me. I was 13 and I was terrified. I had never been through anything like this. He dragged me further into the forest and I kept screaming, hitting him, until at some point I found a way to bite his hand with all the strength of my jaw. He screamed from the pain and just went, you're crazy. And when he was hurt enough, his arm retracted. I escaped and turned back and made the sprint of my life. I think the guy must have lost interest in me or something because he didn't run after me. I jumped back over the river and found there was only one friend in the whole camp. I kept running though, and I'm still not sure if she saw the thing that happened or if she just ignored it. I went to the monitors, but I felt too terrified to do anything or even tell them, and so I didn't. I didn't know who it was. I didn't know if it was someone from the camp or a total stranger. I didn't even see his head, his skin, the clothing that he was wearing. Nothing. I was just too scared. That same night, I called my parents, but they couldn't come to pick me up right away. So, I had to go back home on the bus like everyone else. What terrified me the most was, the guy could be one of the people in the same group as me. He could have just hit me in my sleep and dragged me somewhere. I still don't know who that guy is, and I never wanted to know more. I want to share one of the scariest things of my entire life. Not only because of a creepy subject, but also because of a creepy guy. And you can treat this as a cautionary tale. 
So, uh, last night, my model and I went to finally do a photo shoot that we wanted to do for a long time. So basically, I wanted a dead girl in your headlights at night type of photo. It was 9pm but it was already pitch black here. We found some deserted road in the middle of nowhere and started the shoot. We went through two outfits and she started to change into the third. And then all of a sudden, we saw a car in the forest. There was a dirt road to the left of us. Apparently, he had gotten stuck in the mud and couldn't get out. I would post a video of if I could. We were waiting for him to get unstuck and drive wherever he wanted to drive, but it was taking so long that we decided to go for it and continue our shoot. The model was still trying to change. It's not so easy in the dark. So, I decided to go outside and get my settings ready, so she wouldn't need to stand in the cold rain for too long. As soon as I got out, this dude magically got unstuck and sped to the road that we were on. And so I hopped in the car. We locked the door and sat there. In that moment, we were a little scared, but still. He could be very well just stuck in that road and he just got out. He pulled at the driver's seat where my model sat, like 10 centimeters from her car. He almost broke off her side mirror, and he looked into our car. We had this big butcher knife for photos, so she pulled it from her bag and showed it to him, and that's when he sped off. We decided to go the opposite way in case he decided to block the road or something, but we met at dead end and had to go back. When we went to the place that we met this creep, he was in the same spot as before, pretending to be stuck again, and so we sped right past him and called the police, because we thought he could just be waiting for somebody to go up to him and to offer help and then he would harm them. So guys, please be safe. Pay attention to your surroundings and maybe don't go taking photos in some deserted road. This happened a couple of years ago when I was 16. It was a warm summer night. At nights like these, me and my friends would often grab a pack of cigarettes and a bottle of beer each and go outside to enjoy them. We come from a really small town where everybody is somehow connected. So, the only way for us to drink and smoke without our parents knowing was to do so in secluded places. Luckily, our town is surrounded with huge forests. We were both very familiar with them since we practically grew up there. This one time, it was a night as usual. We both grabbed our forbidden contraband, some flashlights, and we headed out. We took the path through the long meadow, which ended at the edge of the forest. From there, led a path through the forest by which it's a 20 minute walk back to town in a steep downhill terrain. At the place where the meadow and the forest meet, there is a gazebo with a fireplace where people go for picnics. As we were walking through the meadow, we would stop a few times to ensure from afar that the gazebo wasn't occupied. It was around 11pm and the night was incredibly dark. Even though we were out in the open, we had to use our flashlights to see anything. We made sure that the air was clear. We approached the gazebo to light our first cigarette. We were just standing there, puffing and talking, while always scouting our surroundings with the beams of our flashlights. After maybe five minutes, we decided to take the path through the forest back to town. We walked about 30 meters, at which point we couldn't see the place where we were previously standing. And that's when we heard it. From the gazebo where we were standing just seconds earlier, came a long, terrifying scream. It sounded as if somebody, a man by the sound of it, was being cut to pieces while still very much alive. The kind of scream that turns your blood to ice instantly. After the first scream... There is a pause for a few seconds. During this whole time, we were both so scared that we couldn't even move. Then, it started again, even louder and more terrifying. The second scream snapped us back to reality. Without a word, we just started sprinting through the rough terrain, not once looking back. At this point, I was so pumped up with adrenaline that I couldn't hear anything except my own heartbeat resonating in my ears. We've never run that fast, and we didn't stop until we had reached the lights of town. 
When we finally did, we both just sat on a sidewalk under a lamppost, panting and gasping for air. Nobody said anything for a good 30 minutes, until from my friend came a single but quite eloquent word. Crap. After a while, we started talking about it. We came up with a conclusion that either somebody was having fun at our expense, or somebody really got hurt. At the end, we decided to head back there the first thing in the morning. But surprise, surprise, no signs of anyone being injured or anyone struggling. We decided that it was just someone playing pranks on us. However, to this day, he keeps gnawing at me. Something just doesn't add up. We were standing there for quite some time, so the person must have been very well hidden. On the other hand, it would be almost impossible for anyone to just walk in there without any light, since it was so dark. And even if he had some kind of torch, we would certainly spot him. Anyway, screaming man in the forest, I'm glad I didn't see you. Since my last post here sparked quite a discussion, I decided to post another one of my unsettling stories that are tied to our local forest. I grew up in these forests and I feel quite comfortable there. Nevertheless, I stumbled into a few unsettling situations there that would firmly stick in my mind forever. This was one such occasion. I was 18 at the time. One evening, me and my two friends, Mike and Paul, decided to go camping. Well, camping maybe isn't the right word since we didn't intend to spend the night. Only to chill and have some fun around the campfire for a while. The plan was simple. Head out, build a campfire, drink a few bottles of wine, eat something, and head back home for a good night's sleep. We met at my house when it was still sunny outside. We got ready and we headed out. Our destination was an old abandoned quarry in the middle of the woods, which was maybe 40 minutes from my house. Even though the quarry has a tragic and frankly creepy history, it's a popular place for such occasions. When we got there, the sky was already colored red as the sun slowly sank behind the hills. We quickly gathered all the firewood that we could, so we wouldn't have to look for it later. As the darkness fell and absorbed all of our surroundings into impenetrable blackness, we already managed to get the fire going. We were in a great mood, and we were getting ready for our first toast. That's when we realized that we made a horrible mistake. We had forgotten the corkscrew. We were trying to open the wine without it, but we quickly gave up, because the bottles were quite expensive and we didn't want to damage them. At this point, it was clear that one of us would have to sacrifice himself and jog back to retrieve the corkscrew. After a bit of haggling, I volunteered. However, I had two conditions. Firstly, they would give me a hatchet in case something went wrong along the way. And secondly, no pranks when I got back. Mike and Paul agreed without hesitation. They shoved a hatchet into my one hand and a flashlight to another and sent me on my way. As I was jogging through the forest, I heard a noise resembling a wild boar. Suddenly, I remembered a warning I had received from an older hunter a few days ago. He said that this time of year, the boars were getting dangerous, especially at night. I was a bit nervous, but luckily, I had managed to survive with no harm. I arrived safely to my house, much to the surprise of my mom who didn't expect me so early. I explained the whole deal and she just laughed. I grabbed the corkscrew and was back on my way. Not wanting to experience an unpleasant boar encounter, I chose another slightly longer path, this time through an open field. After a while, I got to her spot. It was a small clearing surrounded on one side by massive rocks, maybe 70 meters tall, and on the other side by a thick forest. Somewhere in the middle of the clearing was our campfire. When I approached it, I realized that there wasn't anybody, although our backpacks were still on the ground and the fire was burning bright. Great. We specifically agreed that there would be no pranks when I got back. Those dicks think that they're funny, I thought to myself. 
I resentedly sat down near the fire while facing the woods. That's the only place where those two assholes could have hidden, I thought. I was really tired and all I could think about was the taste of that exquisite peanut noir that we had brought with us. I really wasn't in the mood for their games and I was getting quite mad. And that's when I heard a snapping of twigs and rustling of leaves from the edge of the forest, maybe 30 meters from where I was sitting. The sound was rhythmical and was undoubtedly the sound of somebody walking. I aimed my flashlight to the spot where these sounds were coming from. In between the trees, I spotted a tall person wearing a dark hoodie. As I shined my flashlight on him, he stopped walking, turned to me, and just kept staring motionlessly. Even though he was directly facing me, I couldn't really see his face. I shouted, Hey Paul, you fatso. I know you're trying to scare me. We agreed on something, so stop messing around and come on out. As I finished, the hooded figure had just turned around and walked deeper into the woods. Exactly at that time, my phone started ringing. Hastily, I took it out of my pocket. It was Mike. I took the call and I started barking at him. Really funny, dude. I thought we agreed on something. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you trying to mess with me. I clearly saw you so you can come out now. Mike, as if frozen for a minute, for what seemed like an eternity, all I could hear was his heavy breathing and Paul mumbling something in the background. When he finally snapped back to reality, he just said, Dude, uh, we're at your house. Uh, we heard some footsteps. At first, we thought you were trying to mess with us, but then we got scared and decided to look after you. I forgot the phone at your house, so we couldn't even call you. Just get the heck out of there and we'll come back for our stuff together. It's BS. Just another one of your funny pranks and I'm not buying it. Hold on a second. For a while, uh, all I could hear was some incoherent mumbling. Hey, what's going on? Said the voice of my mom coming from the phone. My head suddenly spun and my heart skipped a beat as I realized that they weren't kidding. Suddenly, a freezing wave of fear ran through my body. However, I managed to convince my mom that everything was fine, that she didn't need to worry. She gave the phone back to Mike. Just leave everything and come back. We're heading out now. We'll meet you halfway there. I'm not going anywhere alone again. You better get your butts here and do it quick. I'm waiting for you. Uh, but... And I hung up. I didn't wish to make any more noise than I already did. I quickly turned off my flashlight and started to back off in the light of fire. I moved all the way to the huge walls of rock. I figured that if I had my back covered by the rocks, I would eliminate one of the possible ways the unwanted visitor could approach me. I was standing there in complete darkness, trying not to make a sound, while tightly clutching my hatchet, which would be for the next half an hour my best friend. I had to constantly convince myself not to curl into a ball in fear. Even my own body started to betray me. As my hearing got worse due to my savagely beating heart, I was trying to calm myself. But then again, in worst case scenario, every little bit of adrenaline would help. After it seemed like an eternity, I spotted two weak light beams coming from the forest. I heard Paul shout my name. I've never been so relieved. I finally ran out from my hiding to greet my two friends. For quite some time, we were just standing there, laughing like maniacs from a leaf. We were even getting a bit cocky and we thought about saying, after all, there was just one supposedly creep lurking between the trees, and there were three of us. Funny. Just minutes earlier, I was crapping myself in fear, and now I was suddenly full of tough macho BS thinking, what could possibly happen? In the end, healthy judgment got the better of us and we decided to leave. We packed our things and put out the fire and got out. We took our bottles of wine to enjoy somewhere else. Somewhere where it's nice and brightly lit.